I'm Denise Yamaguchi, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Agricultural Foundation, and I want to thank all of you for being here. I know the room feels a little empty, but we're at 50% capacity because we're supposed to have 60 people joining us tonight, and we also have another 40 plus people joining us on Zoom. So thank you for being here. I think this is a really important topic. We are hosting this event in accordance with to the health and safety protocols and mandates by the city and county of Honolulu. And we ask that you keep your masks on except while eating and drinking. After the program, you will have an opportunity to mingle, but we ask that you wear your masks while walking around. City and county rules do not allow you to walk around with food and beverage. So if you leave, if you want to walk around and talk to someone else, please leave your food and drink at the table. As with all eat, think, drinks, food service will be served when the program concludes shortly after 7 o'clock. Tonight's program is being recorded and broadcast on Zoom. Please silence your phones and refrain from talking so our guests attending on Zoom can fully experience the program. The Hawaii Agricultural Foundation launched Eat, Think, Drink in November of 2016 in an effort to spark meaningful conversations about important agricultural and food issues facing our community and to build and engage a larger network of conscious and caring consumers like yourselves. In 2017, we hosted Eat, Think, Drink, School Lunch, Hawaii's Farm to School Initiative, and brought thought leaders together to talk about the possibilities of increasing local produce in our public school cafeterias. We heard from Chef Ann Cooper on how she's been working with the local food systems across the country on changing the way we prepare school lunch for our children. We also heard from others like Chef Greg Christian on how he worked on changing the kitchens in the Kohala complex um, teaching cafeteria workers how to cook and changing their attitudes and those of students. Today, at our 16th Eat, Think, Drink, we will be looking at the progress that has been made since then. For Eat, Think, Drink School Lunch 2.0, Hawaii's Farm to School Initiative, I would like to start off by acknowledging our major sponsors, Alexander and Baldwin, Kona Brewing Company, Mahi Pono, Southern Glazers Wine and Spirits, the State of Hawaii, and the Ulupono Initiative. We are honored tonight to have Randall Tanaka, the current Assistant Superintendent for the Hawaii State Department of Education, Office of Facility and Operations, to deliver the keynote this evening. Mr. Tanaka's presentation will focus on Hawaii State Department of Education's progress and vision for feeding children healthy, nutritious meals, while also supporting our local agriculture industry. His presentation will be followed by a panel discussion and a, lot of, and a live audience Q&A. For our audience or on Zoom, if you have questions, please feel free to enter them in the Q&A function on Zoom. It is now my pleasure to introduce Randall Tanaka. First of all, good evening, aloha. Uh, thank you for your warm reception, um, Randy Tanaka. Department of Education. I am not an educator in that sense. So I come from a logistics and operation side of the business. Um, um, there's a gentleman sitting over there, Shantajima, who is a, a, a complex area superintendent. He was one of the guys that interviewed me for this job when, when they called me. Uh, I haven't completely forgiven him for that hiring me or make, making that recommendation because he never told me what the job was like. And I asked him about that, and he said, I didn't tell you because you wouldn't take the job, and if that was the case. So when I sit down tonight, and Denise leans over and says, so what will happen to you when the governor changes? Do you go? So I told her that um, my team tells me you don't have to worry about your job because nobody wants your job. <laughs> so, you know, you're feeling good. You know, I'm a couple years from retirement, so I figure, hey, you know. but. First of all, thank you very, very much for your time this evening. Um, <clears throat> they call guys like me AS. Every, in the deal with it, say AS Tanaka. So I said, why don't you just call me Randy? Because I'm one letter away from being something else to you in a few moments, right? But we'll work through it. So I'm going to talk about uh, my view of the world from coming into the DOE. January 24th will be two years. A friend of mine told me only people in jail count time. 
So <laughs> I made a commitment to the DOE for two years, uh, three years. So um, we're, we're two thirds there. So I'm gonna talk about farm to school. <clears throat> and um, believe it or not, I have done some farming. It is hard work. It is really hard work. Most of my staff has never farmed in their life. So what I'm working on is trying to get them onto a farm to give them the realities of what farming is like. Another thing about Denise, one year she came and she did this fundraiser for this church out in, uh, I think, Kuliora, or Hawaii and was a Halloween function. So they had bought all these pumpkins, right, as part of the donation package. And they bought it from Aloon Farms, rained heavy, they couldn't get into the fields to harvest the pumpkins, and they couldn't get all the pumpkins. So three weeks ago when we were having this heavy rains, you can appreciate what the farmers were going through. It is a tough job. But farm to school. A little bit about the operation. We are 257 schools throughout the state <clears throat> and another 37 charter schools. Uh, we have an operating budget of $120 million. We're a big business. We purchase about $45 million in food on an annualized basis. We have about 1,200 employees in our food service area. We have 34 branch level positions and this is like the management team for the 1,200 and 257 schools. Okay. Last year, the legislators passed a bill, uh, 175 and 176, governor signed it into law, mandating the percentage of local product that we need to use and consume by 2030 and 2050. Okay. Key to our mission is providing healthy food as described by the USDA develop an ag workforce. Nobody wants to farm. It is a hard job. Okay. So the next generation does not want to farm. We need to enrich our food system. Everybody talks about sustainability, right? But ag is one area that we need to have sustainability because if we cannot bring in food from outside, we're going to have to depend on ourselves. And right now, we are not at that capacity. We need to create capacity. We need farmers. And that's part of what our mission is. And we do this really from a vocational standpoint. Right? Farm 101 is the kids, K to 6. Plant a garden, plant something the elementary schools, it's 101. Seven to nine, we begin to really introduce the science of farming, and 10 to 12, try to get them to make a choice in workforce. <clears throat> and the only way we can do this is with partnerships. We need to have our farmers, we need to have our educators, we need to have the STEM folks develop new means of farming. To be digging into the ground and planting in the soil is an archaic way of doing farming. We can't get the yield per acre. We can't sustain the cost, water, fertilizer, all of that. It, it's an inefficient way of farming. Right? You need to have a higher yield per acre. Yep. Oh, I don't like the people Zoom on. They should be here. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay. Hello? Okay. So, what is our role? Once again, meeting that 2030 target and 2050 target. 30%, 50%. Okay. 30%, 50%. Work with our farmers. If we buy $45 million in food a year, we should be buying that locally. Right? Pretty simple formula. 
sounds simple, a little harder to do because that's not how we built our food system for schools. We put chicken McNuggets in the oven better than anybody else because it's simple to do, it's efficient to do. So we need to work with our stakeholders. We need to build an ag workforce. And it is not your grandfather's farmer anymore. It's just not going to happen. So the challenges we have. We have very poor data. Because we're a highly decentralized purchasing system, every school buys on its own. I can't tell you if that kitchen manager, as a legislator put it to me, if they're buying from their uncle. Right? That's how we purchase currently. So we need data. I need to know what we're doing and how much we're buying. We lack a system, an automated system. In the high-tech world that we're in now, we should have a system. So we're looking at that. We have one that is probably inefficient. Well, I know it's inefficient. So we need a system to capture. And the most important thing is we need to increase consumption by our students. We only feed half our population of students, about 100,000 a day. Even right now when food is free, they don't eat. So I've been visiting cafeterias across the, the, the state. Campbell High School, the largest high school, right? 3,200 kids. Only 600 eat. Only 600 eat. If all of them ate, we wouldn't have room in the cafeteria. Right? So I had a friend, the son went to high school, sit there. I said, how come you don't eat the lunch? He said, uncle, the food is junk. I went, okay. Because we're never going to get them to eat if the food is junk. Right? So I asked him, where do you eat lunch? Oh, outside the fence, the Manapur truck. I could just go over to eat Manapur truck. I think to myself, oh, the Manapur truck guy is just hammering us into the ground. Not a good formula. Okay, so we need to increase consumption. So how do we go about doing that? Kids eat what they cook. Right? We have 34 innovation kitchens in our high schools. So we're going to begin to have them cook and sample in their student population. I was telling Lighty, WAM does this trip, Ways and Means Committee does this trip throughout the state. So I was fortunate to be invited this year. We were in Hana, and Hana Ranch, uh, hosted a dinner, and they had this ulu brochette. It was outstanding. I mean, it was outstanding. Right? So we've been working with the chef that did that meal to get that recipe. Right? We're going to replicate it in our innovation kitchens in our schools, let them sample it, and get product adaptation. Ulu is an acquired taste, right? Tilapia is an acquired taste. How many of you eat tilapia in here? You guys are all sick. <laughs> I don't eat no tilapia, right? The older kids are not going to eat tilapia. The younger kids are going to eat tilapia if you don't tell them it's tilapia, right? So we did a, a food tasting, elementary, intermediate, high school. They didn't tell them it was tilapia, fish sticks, rave reviews, okay, we're on our way, right? So next year we're gonna introduce that at the elementary level. Right? We're not gonna tell them it's tilapia, we're gonna tell them it's golden perch, but you know, what we want the kids to do is go home and say, Mom, I had the greatest meal at school today. That's what we want. Right? So I go to Kaiser High School. There's this young lady, a group of girls, 
and she has this like bento box. Beautiful arrangement. So you know, <laughs> your mother must be from Japan, right? Because they box all that stuff, right? So I asked her, how come you don't eat school lunch? She said, oh, my mom's been making my box lunch since I was in the second grade. Okay, we concede that customer. We are not going to convert them, right? Then I asked the other girls, how come you guys don't eat school lunch? Well, it was cold yesterday. And they just associate today's lunch is going to be junk. Okay. So I walk around a little bit more. I come to this table where all these big, big soles, all the brothers play football. Right? So how's the lunch? He said, oh, uncle, it's good. I like eat two if I could. Right? So we have to differentiate the customer. We need to have a better understanding of who that customer is and what we're going to provide for them. That's going to take a little bit of work. That's going to require good food, stuff that they like. Now, you've got to know USDA says limited salt, limited sugar. Right? That's the health requirement. We'll figure that out. See? So we've got to go after local product. We need to replace the imported product with local product. Okay. We need to make sure the nutritional value is what the USDA requires. Because we still need that $50 million that they give us. We need to fix our kitchen operations. The average school in the state of Hawaii is 61 years old. That means the average kitchen in the state of Hawaii is 61 years old, right? Some of these kitchens are older than you guys. So we, we need to upgrade that. And we need to train our managers to be inspirational and to be creative and to work with their food partners in the school, right? So that's about the partnership. We needed to replace some of this old equipment. And we need to work on the menus. I have two dietitians, one more coming aboard. Right? So we're working real hard on the menu development. And we need to align the menus and the product together. Right? Because if we can't supply then it doesn't matter. We're going to go back to Chicken McNuggets. Right? So product market fit. We're not there yet. So centralize our data. Automate our school level processes. Fix our purchase orders. So what we're working on, and we work with a, a great partner, Russell Hata, with Y Hata. Right? They're our primary supplier, right? So we got to work with them to manage that data with us. We got to watch our inventory, manage our inventory. Centralize the reporting tracking and work with our partners to say this is what we're consuming. Right. right now, we have supply chain issues. I think a couple months ago, or a month ago, we couldn't get flour. Can't get flour. What are you going to do? So we started with chips. Seems to be working. The kids love it. The parents not so happy about having chips every day, but we'll work through it. Right? So when I look at our tray, our food tray, we've got five compartments, 20%. So, we got beef, that's one part of the tray. We can do the, the leafy greens, that's 40% of the tray. So we can do this, milk doesn't count, because we repackage milk. Right? But we can achieve this, it's not that hard. Product market fit. Procurement of local products. When I came aboard, they told me procurement is the problem, procurement is the problem. Procurement is not the problem. It's alignment of the product to our menus. 
I can say we'll work closer with our venues. This kitchen I visited, so I'm an advocate of a centralized kitchen. And so I went to LA, LA Unified District. I went to Bethel, Washington. They have a centralized kitchen. The LA Unified District serves 160 schools a day. 100,000 kids a day. 45,000 square foot facility, highly automated. Every day they produce 100,000 meals. They deliver it to the schools every day from 2.30 in the afternoon to 10 at night. And this operation has been running at least 15 years. Right? So when you do something like this, you can automate. They got 35 employees right? running 8 to 5. Nothing extraordinary other than the delivery. And they do it every day. So you got fresh product in the morning. So the first trip I looked at their operation, all their dry storage, how they bring in. They have 20 trucks delivered through a 250-mile radius of that L.A. County. I mean, I was stunned by how they do this. But we have that model here in Hawaii called Zippies. They do the same thing out at Waikele, right? They serve 20 of five of their, all the chili, beef stew, mac salad, all comes from a central location. So the model's here. So we're beginning to really look at this centralized kitchen concept. Problems we have, like I say, aging, aging kitchens. If our best estimate to refurbish a school's kitchen is from 9 to 15 million. And the reason it's so high is our electrical infrastructure is old. We gotta rip that all out and start over. Then you gotta buy equipment. Then you gotta get the, all the plumbing and all of the above. A centralized kitchen will cost us between 35 and 45 million. We need these kitchens to be adjacent to our ag centers, right? So the farmers are not driving across the state to deliver their product. In fact, we have an idea to pick up the product from the farmer. So, Wahiawa, Nanakuli, Kapule, where our farms are. So, fix equipment or centralized kitchen. Okay. Look at the successful programs. I was just at Mililani High School. They serve 2,000 kids, serving three schools. Why do they do it so well? When I went there that day, she has eight kitchen workers, five are out because of COVID. And they still deliver 2,000 meals because they have passionate people about their food service. So that's what we gotta work on, the right people. Okay. Once again, by geography, the food hubs will be critical on the neighbor islands. Reduction, the, the variable I haven't figured out yet is the transportation of the products to the schools, but we'll get there. Okay. Nurture local business. My father used to say, what Hawaii builds, builds Hawaii. So we got to go support our local industries. Consolidated purchasing, improve quality, can monitor production, energy efficiencies, all of the above makes sense. We're not the first ones to do centralized kitchens. They're all over the U.S. Our job is to figure out what they do better than what we can do better. So. That's my story. We all can eat now, 7 o'clock. No. <laughs> Thank you very much.